let's start with a prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, most holy, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and here at our death. Amen. The seat of wisdom, pray for us. Wretched of refuge of sinners, pray for us. Help of Christians, pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. Okay. Um, I think some background to this uh, in unbelievable and totally believable uh, crisis. It is a crisis of the Society of St. Pius um, Unbelievable because the society seemed so strong. It seemed faithful for many years. It lasted, it has lasted, it's in its 42nd, 43rd year now. And yet, so unbelievable, it was faithful. Then believable, because as I sort of said in the sermon, um, the say exactly the same disease that caught hold of the mainstream church uh, at Vatican II, exactly the same modern world, exactly the same disease of wanting to go with the world, exactly the same disease of cha adapting the church to the world. Now it's adapting the society to the worldly church in completely in parallel. Uh, so it's completely believable. In that sense, it's completely believable. I think some history of the church so that you can see where we are. We are not at the most glorious moment of church history, obviously. How many of you heard or know anything of the seven ages of the church? A few of you, yes. OK. Well, I have talked. It's something I have talked about before. But it's always precious and it's always interesting. You can see uh, this, this, this paper is vertical. What I really need is a big board and then a great arch going left to right. But in fact, this, la this arch is going to have to go up and down. But that doesn't matter too much. So we have an arch going from Christ. Oh, that's a lovely purple to the Antichrist. <coughs> and that is the sort of history of the church. Let's, let's present the history of the church as a great arch, like that. And seven ages. These seven ages are come from a commentary by a German priest at the beginning of the, seven, of the 1600s, just about the time, soon after, or during the Thirty Years' War, the terrible Thirty Years' War from 1618 to 1648, which devastated Germany. Um, and the Catholics fought to hold on, to keep Catholic, Germany Catholic, but the Protestants were too well established, and in the end they had to agree, agree to differ. And that was the Peace of Westphalia, in 1848. But he was writing at that time, so it was a time of great chaos uh, in Germany. He was German. And he was writing a commentary on the Book of the Apocalypse, uh, the, f the last book of the, chap of the Bible, which is very, a very mysterious book. And uh, he thought he was inspired. He, he felt an inspiration to write this commentary. And when the inspiration dried up in the beginning of chapter 15, he simply stopped writing because he was no longer had the same inspiration to write. So he thought he was inspired when he wrote this. We're going to look at his commentary just of two chapters, chapter 2 and chapter 3. I don't know how many of you know anything about the book of the Apocalypse, but chapter 2 and 3 are the seven letters to the seven churches of Asia, Smyrna, Pergamum, Laodicea, Philadelphia, and so on. There are seven of them. Sardis, and so on. <clears throat> and he, what he said was, what he felt insp inspired to say was, it's perfectly possible he was inspired. Uh, God revealing, the Holy Ghost revealing secrets down the ages as the church needed them. But this an analysis of the seven ages is very interesting. So he said, the first letter to, I forget which church it is, corresponds to the first age of the church, the second to the second age, and so on. Um, the first age of the church, he reckoned, goes from 33 BC, when our Lord was crucified, to 
to 70, the year 70. Uh, that's the first age of the church. And it's the age of the apostles. Because that's the age from the moment from our Lord's crucifixion, 33, until the destruction of Jerusalem, 70. Those are 37 years in which the apostles uh, began, began to spread, spread. They concentrated firstly, they stayed around Jerusalem together, and then they exploded and the apostles went all over the world. You may remember that St. Thomas died in India, and you can still visit the place of his martyrdom. Where, because, and he's an honored figure in pagan Hindu India. And he regularly has, I think, a postage stamp in India. And the other part, St. Bartholomew died in today's Armenia, or actually Turkey, the eastern part of the, the western part of Turkey. Uh, St. St. Andrew died in Greece. St. Paul and St. Peter, of course, died in Rome. St. James the Great died in Spain. They spread all over, and they carried the gospel with them. And that's the first age of the church. This, the age of sowing. That's when the, the apostles sowed the gospel all over the world. Uh, and that's the second age. Is that those are the 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 age of the martyrs? The first martyr. There were, there were ten martyr, mar, ten persecutions under the Roman Empire, uh, but by the Romans at Rome. The first was under Nero, a little before seventy. The last was Diocletian, a little before three hundred thirteen. There were ten bloody persecutions, one after another. That then is the age of the martyrs, and that's the age when the church was consolidated. The martyrs with their blood sealed, sealed the foundations of the church. Their blood acted as cement. And if you and I today are Roman Catholics, it's due, of course, firstly to Peter and Paul, but then immediately afterwards it's due to 300 years of, of 200, close on 300 years of, uh, of martyrs. Girls, boys, old men, young men, intellectuals, simple people, working people, that gave their lives, that went down the throats of lions and uh, consolidated the church and converted Rome. Um, when the persecutions began, the virile and warlike Romans were determined to smash this sect that claimed the truth, that claimed that all the other religions in Rome, exactly, Rome practiced ec ecumenism, but the Christians said, no way, Jose. Ecumenism is wrong. Your emperor, you're wrong. You're worshipping devils, said these virgins, these young girls, to the emperor. And the emperor said, I will crush you if you dare to say that. Emperor, I can't say anything else. My Lord and Master Jesus Christ, he's the only God. You are worshipping devils and you will go to hell. Burn her! Burn rack rope! And the little girls stood up to him, obviously with the help of the Holy Ghost. And this example of the martyrs, all of the martyrs, but perhaps especially the young girls, because it's very impressive when a young girl goes through martyrdom. Uh, the, with this example, the Romans finally submitted. These warlike, virile Romans submitted and bowed their heads under the yoke of Christ. That was the, that was the result, the stupendous result of the, of the age of the martyrs. And so in the 313 was the Battle of the Milvian Bridge when Emperor Constantine defeated another co-emperor. There were four emperors, or two main ones at that time. Constantine defeated Maxentius. Constantine became the only emperor. And uh, before the key battle of the Milvian Bridge, which still exists, it was built by Milvius about 100 years before Christ, the bridge still exists. There's somebody who obeyed the laws of engineering. Those were <laughs> <laughs> one arch was was blown up, I think, at the time of Garibaldi, the the Italian Revolution, around 1870. But otherwise, the bridge is still there. So anyway, that's where the battle took place. And and before the battle, our Lord appeared to Constantine and said, "In this sign, you will conquer." And he showed him the um, the banner with the Cairo, the cross, the diagonal cross is the Greek letter chi, or ch, and the p is actually the Greek letter for r. So chr is the beginning of Christus, and uh, our Lord told Max in, uh, Constantine, if you put this symbol on your battle standards, you will win the battle. Constantine had the good sense to do 